Friends, often Quakers do not give ourselves enough credit. We can focus on what we feel has gone wrong, what we'd like to change, where we could try harder. I would like to begin my ministry positively and talk about an area where, in my eyes, we've done well. I was brought up surrounded by Quakerism, at home, at meeting, for a time at a Quaker school and via the brilliant leaveners and the Quaker friends that I grew up with. From a young age, I knew that I was different. I had crushes on the female X-Men and conducted elaborate weddings for my Barbies, but I never, ever thought that I was wrong. The biggest influences in my life were Quakers, and they all impressed on me that my sexual orientation was entirely natural and rather ordinary, really. It never struck me as being a big deal. Yet, as I grew, I realised that to the rest of the world, it was a big deal. And so, I sat in the front row of Yearly Meeting 2009 as British Quakers agreed to support legalising same-sex marriage, clutching a friend's hand as we cried happy tears. Even today, at the age of 30, and having had my own same-sex Quaker wedding almost three years ago, I still become emotional when I think of how different my upbringing could have been. In my career as an online content creator, I receive hundreds of messages a day. Many are from LGBTQ plus teens and young people who are reaching out for help and to share their stories as they live in fear and shame. My dream is to be able to share through my work the warmth, light and acceptance that my childhood as a lesbian Quaker instilled in me. While there are steps still to take and things still to be improved and by no means does my experience speak for all the young Quakers, there are many things to be celebrated. I also applaud Yearly Meeting's focus this year on sustainability. The environment is rapidly becoming the issue for young people and old alike, as humanity's ecological footprint has expanded to the point when 1.6 planets would be needed to provide resources sustainably. It is right that we focus our minds to what we can do to help, both on an individual level, through our lifestyle and purchasing habits, and on a grander scale, hoping to affect political policy and global corporations. But I challenge Quakers to hold in their mind the principles of equality and inclusivity that make our society so special. Just as we stood firm on same-sex marriages and love, so we must include intersectionality in our thoughts on the environment. We must support people to do as they are able, to do as much as they can and recognise that there are many among us, along with many non-Quakers, who are not able to live up to as high a standard of environmentalism as they might wish, whether this be for financial, cultural or disability-related reasons. We must make sure never to alienate or isolate these people. I live with a disability that affects my nerves, muscles, soft tissue and organs, and there are many helpful aids that allow me to live my life that are not exactly environmentally friendly. From medical blister packs to sanitary wrappings to medical equipment itself, for me it feels that recent conversations about environmentalism are missing the voices of those living with disabilities and chronic illnesses. This was highlighted by the government's proposal for a straw ban. Straws are very inconsequential bits of single-use plastic to those who do not need them. But for those who need them, straws are life-saving. Just under a fifth of deaths in people with an intellectual disability each year are due to asphyxiation from liquids. Every single alternative reusable straw is unsuitable for people with certain disabilities. For example, a person with a shake can break their teeth on a metal straw. A glass straw is an obvious injury risk, but acrylic ones can be too. Silicon are expensive and don't stay in place. My condition means I spend half of my time lying prone, but also need to have fluids near constantly. I've tried every type of straw available that would allow me to drink whilst lying flat, and only poseable plastic straws fit the bill. Just because something is an easy change to help the environment for the majority of people does not mean that it is the case for all people. We must champion change by supporting people to do as much as they are able, but avoid laying stigma or negativity at the feet of those marginalised people who, for reasons outside of their control, cannot go further. That does not mean that people should be excused from trying, or that the burden of climate change is not on all of our shoulders, only that a person's path in assisting the struggle to save our planet may not be straightforward.